Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodds, and today we're going to take a look at the basics of cutting out a person in Photoshop, a basic but essential thing that you're really going to uh, be glad that you know how to do if you're doing a lot of anything in Photoshop, or maybe you just need to cut yourself out and move yourself to another position in a photo or whatever. We're going to cover it all, everything you need to know, and have a bunch of fun while we do it right now in Photoshop. All right, well, here we are in Photoshop, and we just have a photo of this woman on the street, and let's say we wanted to cut her out, and we could do anything, but in this case, maybe we want to cut her out and move her over uh, to this other sort of beachy scene. I just replace the background. It's a pretty simple task, uh, at least simple in theory. Here's how we do it. The first thing I like to do is just a general overview of the image. This is going to be something that as you become more and more proficient with cutting out people or just objects in general, uh, you're going to kind of do this automatically, but I'm going to break it down here and I'm looking here at uh, all the edges of her body, her, her clothing. These are all very smooth edges. It's not like she's wearing a big poofy furry jacket or anything like that. So though we, we know we're going to make a selection that's going to encapsulate all of those long, straight, smooth edges. Then, of course, we have her hair, which has got a lot of stray, loose, frizzy ends. And uh, we're going to, you know, just identify that and just say, yep, we know we need to make a selection for that. And then, of course, down here, we also do have to think about the transparency factor of her bag. And we'll play around with that a little bit to really get a proper transparent selection in Photoshop. It's a little bit more in depth, uh, but we'll have a little bit of fun with it and just uh, sort of do our own little cutout on that. I'm going to think about this as making sort of three separate selections, one for her head and hair, one for her body, and then doing some uh, final adjustments to get the transparency of the bag. So we're going to zoom in and begin with her head, and I'm going to grab my quick selection tool up here, and uh, I can adjust the size of the brush and just paint a quick selection over her and just get, get it to as, you know, as good a selection as we can get it without stressing ourselves out or worrying too much and then just go select select and mask to open up the select a mask dialog box and we can see just sort of a preview of our selection looks rough does not look very good at all uh, but it's a starting point I'm going to turn on the red overlay view mode and then I'm going to reach up for my refine edge brush tool and this tool I'm going to make it about the size of the edge so about as far away from the edge of her solid hair as the wispy hairs are flying I'm going to make my brush about that big and I'm going to paint over the edge and let Photoshop very finely examine that little area and uh, pick out as much of that hair as it can possibly pick out. And then after I do that, I'm going to move down and just choose to output this to a new layer with layer mask. I hit OK and we'll have a new layer with her up on the new layer. And this is going to be sort of the head and face selection or head and hair selection. And at this point, I'm going to drag the beach scene over, just drop it beneath her on a layer. And this will really allow me to take a close look at how good or bad the selection is that we just got. And in this case, I can see it does need a little bit of work. There's some solid colors there, some things we need to clean up, and we'll clean it up. Uh, but I think what we're going to do first is go ahead and use the quick selection again and loop a selection around her body. Now, I'm going to move this to the view mode where I'm just viewing this over the black background. I find this is just... I don't know, it's just the easiest to pick out these kind of really straight long edges. Now this has some kind of staggeredness to it, some jagginess. So I'm going to crank up the smoothing. Again, we don't need to worry about her hair. We already made that selection. We're just worried about long, straight, smooth edges. So I'm going to crank up the smoothness and then I'm really going to push the feathering up to blur the edge really badly and then boost the contrast and shift the edge uh, toward the, to the negative to so, sort of shift that edge inward. This is going to help give me a nice, straight, clean edge and then I'm going to output this just as a layer mask on that same layer and I can see now as I drag this above the beach layer, I can just see I've got my two layers, the, the one that has her body selection and the one that has her head and the beachiness beneath her. And just make sure that the edges look pretty decent. I'll zoom in and I am actually going to select or shut off the body selection and I'm going to uh, select the mask for the head and face layer. Just use my lasso tool, ring a big selection around all the bits we don't need here and just fill that with black uh, just so we hide that so we're not getting sort of redundant edges. Uh, if the edges stack up or you get you know, two, two copies of the same edge, that edge is kind of probably always going to look pretty bad. So then I'll just zoom around, check out all the edges and make sure they're all looking decent, which they do. And then we're going to come up to the head and face and hair, and we're going to play around with cleaning up the edges. And the way we're going to do that is by selecting the layer mask for this head face layer. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to set the brush tool to the soft light blend mode, the brush tool, not the layer. And I'm going to paint with black. And then I'm just going to gently paint around those edges and just clean away as much of that like heavy color as I can without we, I just want to make sure that the edge doesn't become this like hard, crunchy, non soft, fluffy hair like edge. So we're just looking to get rid of some of that excess color on the edges. 
All right, and now one other thing that we can do if we select this mask is we can head back into Select a Mask. Pop open your Properties panel or just go Select, Select a Mask, whatever works. And in Select a Mask, we can see uh, the selection of her hair. And one of the cool things is we can change the view mode to the On Layers view mode, which is going to show us exactly what this looks like as we update our selection or our mask in this case. It's going to show us exactly what it looks like with the background that we want to place her over so we can really actually see what the image is going to look like. Now, all I want to do is add a little decontaminate colors, which in theory is going to help clean up those edges of the hair a little bit. So I'll turn that on and just reduce the amount, just play with the amount until it looks right and good to you. Uh, and you can now put it to a new layer, layer mask, whatever you want. I think I'm going to stick with my original uh, layer mask here. And then if you do have a tablet, one helpful thing can be to go over that layer mask, set your brush back to the normal blend mode and paint with the color white and just pa manually paint in some hairs uh, all around the edge of the selection. This isn't an absolute must, but it's something that can definitely help uh, in terms of just setting your the, the edge of a really complex selection off and really, really making it look like you did a masterful job of selecting a, a more difficult head of hair or something like that. So keep that in mind if you do have a tablet, uh, definitely super useful. All right, so now for the transparency of the bag. I'm going to move down to the body selection layer, and I'm going to select that layer mask because we're going to work on that. I'm going to use my poly lasso tool. I'm going to give it a two-pixel feather right up there in the toolbar. So you feather two pixels. Just going to blur the edges of our selections a little bit, help them look a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to go through and just begin cutting out all of the panels that should be see-through. Then I'll create a new layer and I'll fill all those selections with white. I'll either paint it in or fill them with white. Or in this case, actually, I probably should have done black. And just reduce the opacity just to make it look like there's some material material there uh, that we're looking through. So something like that's just kind of a quick hacky way to make it look like, oh yeah, there's still definitely some sort of plasticky material we're looking for, uh, looking through, excuse me. There's not a lot of those specular highlights and things like that. But again, we're not really getting into how to select and uh, composite transparent objects. That would have to be a whole separate tutorial because it does get a little involved. But you can see here that by breaking up what would be a pretty complex and difficult selection into several sections, you can really simplify making a selection like this where we need to select the woman, select her entire body, select the head and hair, and then select and knock out the areas of that transparent bag. By breaking it down, making a, what would be a complex selection simple, it does, in fact, make things a little bit more simple. The only thing that might be more complex for you and you might get tripped up on is the fact that we do have two layers that have her on them and each of them do have a layer mask and the layer masks, you know, you kind of want them to, you want them to work together so it looks good. But that can be a matter of painting white and black and just bringing back the areas of each layer that you want uh, and just playing with it and having fun with it. You'll really get some great selections using this technique. Um, it's just a matter of breaking it down. Where do I need those highly detailed selection edges? Where do I need those long, straight, smooth edges? Um, and then in this case, we have that kind of, you know, the aberration of the clear poly plastic bag that she's got. Uh, but that is how you can go about creating relatively complex selections and just selecting and cutting out people in Photoshop. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn those notifications on. Also, check out this video on how to match color. Once you've cut the person out in Photoshop, it's useful to be able to match the color and saturation and lighting in the new scene and just make it look as realistic as possible. This is a great little technique. You can check it out by clicking that link there on the screen. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.